we're back with information about heart disease and women. You know, heart disease is the number one killer of women in this country. I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Steve Gubin, a cardiologist and president of Stern Cardiovascular Foundation. Welcome. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thanks for having me to talk about such an important topic in women. Well, Steve, let me ask you first. You know, we hear all these uh, stories about the symptoms in women are different than men when it comes to having heart disease. Can you explain that? Yeah, I mean, the most common symptom in both men and women is some type of chest pain. But it's not, and especially in women, it's not like what you see on movies, an elephant sitting on your chest. For women, their chest pain may be more of a pressure, fullness, or squeezing sensation. But also in women, they're more likely to have atypical symptoms. They may have pain in their jaw. They may have pain in the shoulder, between their back, you know, in the back, the upper back, their upper abdomen. They may just be short of breath, nauseated. Uh, they may just profusely sweat, or they may just have fatigue. And all those symptoms, other than chest pain, may be signs of a heart, heart attack or a pending heart attack. So the, the key thing is, and, and we keep trying to get this point across, uh, especially to women, you don't have to have, as Dr. Gubin said, the big elephant sitting on your chest. It can be something very atypical. And sometimes it's kind of difficult for women to know, is this serious enough that I go see the doctor? What's your advice about that? I think that, you know, when people see the color pink, I know what they think. They need to start thinking about pink shirt on. They need to start to think about the color red. Because, and I think, even if your symptoms are atypical, um, you have to realize you have to be proactive. And don't blow off atypical symptoms. If you have atypical symptoms and you think it's nothing, still see your doctor. It's real important to be proactive because, as you said earlier, heart disease is the number one cause of death in both men and women. Now, what are some of the tests that you can do uh, in your office to check women and men, for that matter, for heart disease? Well, I think the most important thing is if you have a concern is to see your doctor. You know, make sure you see the doctor, and the doctor needs to get a good history. Uh, and, the, and the office will probably do your routine vitals, make check your blood pressure, and do an EKG. But if you're, if after talking with your doctor, you think there's just very low risk, it's not likely that it's heart disease, you may not do any other tests. But it was in that intermediate category where we're concerned that it may be a heart problem. You probably initially um, start out with maybe a stress EKG, but realizing in women they're at high risk for having a false positive study. Some better uh, tests to identify heart disease in women would be like myocardial perfusion studies, like stress stalliums that you and I both do in our office, or even a stress echocardiogram. And also another test would be like doing a calcium score. Which hey, is, explain to us now. Now we do that in our office a lot, and it's a very non-invasive, very simple test to do. Explain how calcium scores can be beneficial. Um, it's a very good test because it's not gender specific. It's good, a good test in both men and women. And what it does is identifies calcium in the coronary arteries. And if there's any evidence of you know, calcified plaque in your arteries, it tells you that you do have some signs of atherosclerosis. And then once you know that, you have to you know, further evaluate the patient to make sure it's not significant. What about the controversy about estrogen in women? You know, there was a, at one time we thought estrogen supplements protected women from heart disease, and then kind of the pendulum swung the other way. What about women and estrogen? What kind of risk or benefit does that give a woman? Well, there's no good studies, no good heart studies that shows that estrogen is really beneficial from a cardiovascular standpoint. A lot of times women, when they go through menopause, they don't feel as well as they would like, and the estrogen makes them feel better. You never, want to smoke, you never want to smoke and take estrogen. That's really a, a no-no. But there's no good data saying that estrogen uh, decreases your risk of a cardiac event. We do know that women usually develop heart disease about 10 years later in life than men. And we think that is because they do have estrogen on board. And that's why we always thought by giving extra estrogen, you could prevent a cardiac event. But those studies haven't panned out. And, and when we're talking about women and heart disease, as far as uh, any type of treatment plan, uh, if someone comes in and you do find that they have coronary disease, uh, what kind of treatment options do you have? Well, um, once you, you identify someone who has heart disease, they always want to have, make sure they're on an aspirin. And I think it's important because for primary prevention, aspirin has not been shown to be very beneficial, especially in women. But once they're identified as having heart disease, they should be on a, an aspirin. And then they also should make sure their cholesterol is well controlled. Uh, if they're diabetic, you know, the proper medicines for that to make sure their blood sugars are well controlled. 
and make sure the blood pressure is well controlled. Um, we usually, for heart patients, are on usually if they have heart disease, are on a beta blocker or maybe even ACE inhibitor, you know, uh, like a, a statin for their cholesterol. And if they actually have a blockage, what are some of the things invasively you can do to correct that? Um, a lot, for first of all, I want to say that if you do have a blockage, uh, many of our patients can still be treated just medically, and they do just as well. But if they have a significant lesion that has to be treated, usually they get angioplasty and then or, and stent it. You know, you get a, a balloon angioplasty first, and they place a stent, which is most common. And if they have significant three-vessel disease or a real high-risk lesion that can't be angioplasty or stented, they may be a candidate for bypass surgery. Well, in our last minute, tell us, Dr. Gubin, uh, again, and reiterate this, because I think it's so important. With women, you're not necessarily going to have the typical movie chest pain that you have, uh, a lot of people have with a heart attack. Women can have atypical symptoms, and again, tell us what those commonly are. A lot of times, the women, their, their chest pain is not, you know, like the classic pain we talked about. It may just be a, a burning, a fullness, a squeezing sensation, but they also may just have jaw pain. Uh, shoulder pain, between upper back pain, upper back abdominal pain, fatigue, shortness of breath, and they just may even feel kind of anxious. Those could all be signs of a cardiac, um, a, a pending cardiac event. Well, please listen to what Dr. Gubin had to say today. And if you have any of those type of symptoms, you know, don't just blow it off. Go, go see your doctor. It may be nothing. It could be just arthritis or something very simple, but you don't know unless you go and get it checked out. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you Good to much. see you. Thanks for having me. Coming up on Health Matters, are you dense? No, I'm not talking about your intelligence. I'm talking about this area. Find out what I'm talking about next on Health Matters. I'm Dr. Mark Castellaw.